the purpose of Jesus was a kingdom on earth in the hearts of men. Rediscovering the kingdom will defy almost every concept you have about religion. The message of Jesus was a message of a kingdom from heaven on earth. That was the message of Jesus. Your thinking will be rearranged and your life empowered as Dr. Miles Monroe shifts the focus away from religion toward the ultimate issue, the kingdom of God. Jesus came to restore these kings who lost their kingship and their kingdom. Let us now join the seminar in progress. And benefit from that obedience. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone says amen. Get your notebooks please, right on the top of your page. And please take notes, someday you will have to teach this. Pastor Mark said to me, Pastor Miles, I'm so glad I take notes. And since I've been traveling a little bit, I take more notes than ever before. I never knew I'd have to stand up before these churches and preach. So I'm telling you, your day is coming. I want to speak on the characteristics and concepts of the kingdom of God. Better stated, the concepts and characteristics of kingdom. Not the kingdom, but just kingdom I want to deal with. What are the qualities, the characteristics of a kingdom? I want to begin giving reference to the fact that the Bible is not about a republic. And I keep repeating this because all of us live in the Western world in basically democratic republics. A democratic republic is a form of government where the people vote for the leader. That's a republic and a democratic republic. A democratic republic is the concept... Can you turn on, turn on all the lights for me, please? Thank you very much. I need light. Uh, it's, a, it's a republic where we have leadership depending on the goodwill of the people. And that is why democracy is not a strong form of government. Because democracy is really the power of the people invested in individuals. If the people don't like who they vote for, the next time they get rid of them. Because the power is in the people. The Bible is completely opposite to a republic. The Bible is opposite to democracy. In the Bible there is really no voting when it comes to God's government. The Bible is, and I want to be cautious if I use this word, it's a type of monarchy. It's a type of monarchy. A monarchy, of course, government is where the rulership is invested in a family. That family is considered rightful royal authority. That family becomes the source of authority and they are the ones who judge and rule what is right or wrong. Of course, there are many years have passed, those types of governments have disintegrated and died. There is another, there is one that is very much alive, it's called Swaziland. If you ever visit Africa and you go to visit Swaziland, there is no quote-unquote democratic government in that country, so to speak. The ruler of that country, the head of the country, is the king of Swaziland. My wife and I went to visit there and we learned very quickly who was in charge. And the Bible is really that kind of government. God 
is the king of the universe. His son, his word put in flesh, is the king of the worlds. His children made in the image of that son who are mankind are also rulers of a specific planet called earth. So really, God had a monarchy. He still has a monarchy. He will have a monarchy. And he always will be a monarchy. This is why you, in God's eyes, are not a slave nor a subject. Normally, in a kingdom, the king rules over people. Everybody say people. Write that down. Normally, in an earthly kingdom, the king rules over people. But in the kingdom of God, there's a little shift. In the kingdom of God, the kings do not rule over people. Why? Because in the kingdom of God, all the people are kings. Paradox. So in the kingdom of God, the rulership is not really over people, but rather over territory and domains. This is very different from your normal kingdom. That is why all of us who have come back to God, we are not called subjects as in other kingdoms, but we are called sons. We are sons of who? Well, we are sons of the king. Sons of God. Who is God? He is king of all creation. Seen and unseen. Therefore, if we are the sons of a king, then we are naturally princes and princesses. Are you with me? Now, the way you become a prince and a princess is very interesting. You have to be where the king is to be a prince or a princess. That is why Prince Charles cannot become king today. He's never been king. He is the prince of England. It's monarchy. But he has never become king. Why? Because the queen is in the house and she's still in the throne and she lives where he lives. When... <laughs> Y'all got to catch this. When the children of a royalty live in the same territory where the royalty lives, they cannot be kings. Hallelujah. I'm say it again. As long as the prince and princesses live in the same territory where the king, the father, or the queen lives, they cannot be kings. This is why Prince William and Prince Charles, they're stuck. I believe if Queen Elizabeth of England lives to a ripe old age, Prince Charles will never be king. Right now he is king designate. That's why they are training his son to be king because they figure by the time mama kicks the bucket, Prince Charles going to be so old, he ain't going to rule no throne. So they planted his son to be king. But none of them can be king until mama dies. The only way you can become a king, if you are a prince or a princess, a queen, 
is that either the king dies or the queen dies or you are removed out of their territory and put in a foreign one and now you can be king over that territory. That's the law of kingdom. Hallelujah. Some of you are wondering why God was so excited about creating the heavens and the earth. Some of you are wondering why God was so elated when He created or released His sons in Genesis and He said, this is very good. He got excited. Some of you are wondering why God doesn't want you to come to heaven. Hmm. I was talking to a man yesterday at lunch. And the man said to me, I told my son he must leave my house. Why? He must be a man. He is off age now. He must get his own house. Because as long as he's with me, he's not a man. So you're nodding your head, you're getting the message here. If the fella is 30 years old and living with mom and daddy, he still ain't a man yet. To be a man, you need your own territory. God, listen carefully. You existed before earth. Write that down somewhere, please. You existed before there was an earth. Write a little note next to it. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Little note. Here's what the note says. For he, God, chose you <laughs> before the foundation of the earth and the worlds. When did he choose you? Before. That means you already existed. That's why the next word in that verse says, and he predestined you. This is why the Bible has a strange idea about you. Uh, it talks to you in the past tense. About you. For example, verse 3 of Ephesians 1 says, He hath Past tense, he had, hath, had already blessed you with every spiritual blessing, but they are in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So, not only did you exist before earth, but everything you need to live on it was pre-arranged. So, here's my point. God always had you in heaven. You came out of heaven. In heaven, you cannot rule. Because you are with daddy. That's why there is no dominion for you anywhere in the Bible in heaven. When you go to heaven, you don't rule, you sing. <laughs> now some of y'all just can't wait to go and sing. Just want to go in the choir. Boy, that's some lazy people, huh? I just want to go before the throne for a billion years and just sang my song. What kind of mind is that? What would you do if you have a child and all they want to do is sing in the house for a thousand years? 
They don't want to wash the dishes. They don't want to mop the floor. They don't want to clean the windows. They don't want to organize nothing. They don't want to make their own beds. They just want to sing to daddy and mommy. What would you do? I know what you would do, right? And some of you are laughing at this thing that this is funny. No, that question is important. Because Jesus also asked similar questions and related to the family. Concerning the Holy Spirit one time, he says, Which of you, if your son asks you for bread, would you give him a stone? If he asks you for an egg, would you give him a serpent? He says, you won't do that, would you? So much more would my father give you the Holy Spirit if you ask him. So I ask you now, if your son, if which of your sons wants to sing for you all your life and do nothing, would you let them? I won't. Matter of fact, some of your sons are doing that. All day in the room. They don't go to work. They don't go to school. And some of you parents need to get in that room, pull that plug out, throw the seat away and say, get out of here and go to work. God always had you. You started with him. God told Jeremiah before you was conceived in your mother's womb. You were with me already. I knew you. And before you were even born, he says, I had already appointed you. When you were with me, I already designated you. This one can be a prophet. You see, Prince Charles is in a fix. I believe he... now. Keep the TV on. Brother Charles, if you're watching me, forgive me, but this, I don't mean this deeply, you know. But sometimes you can pray for your mother to die so you can get a little taste of the kingship. In other words, even, see, he's in the middle. He's in a, have a problem. His problem is, boy, I ain't gonna never be king as long as she's sitting up there. I can die a prince. Let me tell you something. God loves us more than Queen Elizabeth. See, do you know that Queen Elizabeth could abdicate the throne? Did you know that? She can actually wake up and say, look, I do not want to be queen anymore. I am too old. I'm now going to transfer the throne to my son. She can do that. God! knew he had a challenge. His challenge was, these kids look just like me. They're just like me. And I want them to taste. Yeah. Y'all don't understand how deep the Bible is. God says, I want them to taste what it feels like to be in charge. But they can't taste it up here. So I need to get them out of my territory. Hmm. And so God says, I will create a new territory called the visible world. Because the invisible, I got that covered. So God's reason... For creating 500 million galaxies and spitting out of his mouth 5 million solar systems in each galaxy. God's purpose for releasing from his belly the billions of stars and black holes. And the reason why he released all the beauty of the universe. Because on his mind he had you. Let me give you a little taste of it. Turn to the book of... Uh, how about Psalm 8? Turn there. Tell your neighbor, I'm about to read about me. Come on, confess it loud. I am about to read about me. Psalm 8. Psalm 8 says, verse 1. David understood what I'm speaking this morning. 
and David couldn't take it no more. And David just started blurting, blurting out these words. He says, Oh Lord, ha, ha, ah Lord, how majestic. Hey boy, say royalty. royalty. Say it again. Royalty. The word majestic is only in reference to royalty. David understood royalty. Something happened to Dave. And Dave says, Oh Lord, my Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Then he begins to talk about what? Creation. And David says, You have set your glory, your nature, above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. One day I'm going to preach on that statement because it's so misunderstood. Because of your enemies, to silence the foe and the avenger. Can I touch that for you a little bit? Would you mind? You might as well say yes, because I'm going to do it anyhow. Everybody say avenger. Everybody say foe. Who's God talking about? This is interesting. David says, you fill the earth with your nature. In other words, you, you created this, this thing called the universe and it shows your nature. You express your nature by creating this thing called the universe and the earth and the planets. He says, you did this. He says, you did this because you wanted, look at verse, verse 1. You wanted to set your nature above the heavens. That means in the starry skies, all the planets. Watch this next verse too. From the lips of children. Now he's referring not to them little kids over there. He's referring to all humanity. (laughs) He says, look. Before the kids came, the angels used to do some stuff for you. But you decided, oh boy. You can't trust these angels. Because the next verse is talking about an avenger, singular, and a foe. Uh Somebody messed up the program in heaven. And God said, that's the last time I'm going to put the worship ministry in the hands of an angel. I'm going to give it to my own kids. He has put praise the responsibility for creating Eden hallelujah in the hands of you people why read on because you want to silence your enemies plural Lucifer and all the angels that fell with him. God, I'm going to silence you all. You think I need your worship, eh, Lucy? Uh, Lucifer. You believe that heaven's going to be bankrupt because I kicked you out, huh? Well, let me tell you what I got planned. I'm going to fill the heavens and the earth with praise because my kids going to be everywhere you look. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm going to shut your mouth. You're going to be so dumbfounded because when you see them, first of all, they don't look like you. They look like my son. They're going to look just like God. Secondly, they're going to have the same nature. And thirdly, they will give me perfected praise. So we're there. They're going to do it. See, you, you are a created being And you are not God. So when you praise me, you praise me because I tell you to. But these kids go and praise me because they love me. Oh, y'all talk to me. See, if someone, let me put it this way. How many of you in this room, now don't lie to me, you love your boss. Let me see your hand. Few hands going up, right. But you go to work, don't you? You still go to work. You don't love, you ain't in love with your boss. You getting paid. Come on, y'all talk to me, man. Satan was paid to worship. <laughs> he was created for it. He had to do it. That's his job. Worship was a job for Satan. God's, I'm, I, that ain't perfect. 
if I do something for you because you pay me, that is not perfect love. No. I get paid. No. I only do this because I get something back from you. But true love does acts without expectation. That's perfect giving. When you give because you love me, and that's the reason why you give, that's perfect love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And God says, Lucifer, I have created some kids just like me. They are going to worship me, praise me, and it's going to be perfected because they're going to do it because they love. How many of you love him this morning? If you two hands, they tell him, I love you, Lord. Now worship him for five seconds. Go ahead. Just, just, just bless him because you want to. See, that's perfect praise. That means you ain't doing it to get something from God. Jesus told the disciples, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Not because you're afraid of me. It's the king. Listen to the king talk. Look at verse 3. When I consider your heavens, hey boys, the works of the heavens, and the works of your fingers, and the moon and the stars, and the planets, and the galaxies, and the black holes, and the Uranus, and Pluto, and, and, and all that wonderful. He says, when I look at all these planets up here, millions of stars, billions of galaxies, when I look at that, he says, I say to myself, what did God have on his mind when he made me? <laughs> you got the picture yet? He says, when I look at the planets, I connect them to me. I say, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you even care? You made all this stuff. You know, yesterday they sent a, a rocket ship from Florida. You all seen that story? And it's going to Mars. And they're going to land on Mars with this ship. And they're also going to study and see there's life there. Well, I, I can tell you now what they're going to find. They're going to find crystalline compounds, evidence of life in microcosmic form because God is a God of life. Whatever God created, got some in it. All right. But they ain't going to find none of we. <laughs> Go clap, man. That's a good place. Ain't hey, no. Mm -mm. <clears throat> I am a margin. Oh, that's a new way for you all eh? I am from Mars too. The earth and the heavens, all them belong to me. God made them because of me. Mars is there because of you. God was putting balance in this local solar system so that there will be unity of planets. Therefore, there will be symmetry around the sun. Therefore, there will be gravitational balance to keep the earth in perfect orbit so that all the planets with their own gravitational pull will keep each planet in the right circumference around the sun so that there will always be precision going around that thing. So Mars got to stay at a certain place. Pluto can't fall out. Oh, Uranus can't jump out. Right? Everybody got to stay locked in because we got to stay at the right distance from the sun so we don't burn and not far away so we don't freeze. And so Mars, thank you for obeying God because you got to keep me in the right place so I can live and fulfill God's purpose and dominate planet Earth. Yeah. That's what they're going to find up there. He created all these things because he had me on his mind, David says. Read the next statement. You made me a little lower than yourself. The word angels, there's the word Elohim, which is the word for God. Now watch this. And you crowned me with what? Glory and honor and made me what? Ruler over the works of your hands. Okay. Underline that statement. What do you rule over? What are the works of your hands, O oh Lord? Let's read it again. I want you to tie these two together. Verse 3. When I consider the heavens and the works of your fingers. Verse 6. 
You made me to rule and dominate over the works of your fingers. <laughs> David says, look, the reason why God wanted to get me out of heaven is because I couldn't rule nothing. God is a monarchy. So he had to create a place so that we can be qualified legally to be kings. Do you know that if the Queen of England decided to ship Prince Charles out and make him ruler over some British territory in the, in the, in, in the Caribbean, do you know he, he, he would become king? Instantly, just king overnight. He is king, but he's in the wrong place, so he's prince. I want you to get this message. See, some of you all can't wait to go to heaven. I'm going to try and tell you that's a demotion. <laughs> Going to heaven is not as wonderful as you think it is. That's why God, man, the more I learn about God, man, we don't understand God. That's why God even provides healing. He don't want you to die fast. Healing doesn't get you in heaven. It keeps you out of heaven. <laughs> when the saints leave their bodies and they go to heaven, they don't do anything. Read the Bible. They just what? Wait. They are waiting, the Bible says. Waiting for what? The redemption of their bodies. What bodies? The same body that was laid in mortality shall be raised in immortality. Mortality means flesh. Immortality means flesh that cannot die. It is still flesh. The point I'm making is this territory here is ours. And it is here that we qualify to be rulers. So when you go out this week, boy, Bradley, thank God you're still in the flesh. See, Monday morning, you are a king. But Holly, when you wake up tomorrow, you ain't no slave, you're a king. Being on earth makes you dangerous. This is your territory. You have made him ruler. Not over heaven. Over the works of your fingers. The earth. The heavens. You crowned him. With glory. And what? Honor. What is honor? Respect man. Respect. God says you got respect. You've got dignity. You've got worth. You deserve honor. All royalties do. Now, who <laughs> are you supposed to get honor from? 